Talk NFL, of course, we do every day at this time. John McMullen, the uh, national columnist over at FanRag Sports NFL, 97.3 ESPN.com. He covers the Philadelphia Eagles on a daily basis, and uh, we're getting close to that draft, but we got some NFL news and notes we want to dive into. And uh, I guess at the top of the list, John, a very interesting story uh, this morning that kind of came out, Dean Blandino, who – did he not like his new role? Like, did he feel like uh, – you know, he had too much pressure on him being the guy to make all the calls? No, I, I don't think it has anything to do with that. I think it has to do with getting more money from television. And I, I think this is a big mistake from the NFL standpoint. They should have learned uh, from what happened with Mike Pereira and understood that this was a possibility. And uh, I think they should have push to keep Dean Blandino. Obviously, they did not. So now we have this drastic shift and drastic change where you're going to have a centralized replay system, and the guy who was going to handle it isn't going to be there. So you better get Alberto Riveron, who some people might remember as an on-field referee. You better get him up to speed because he's number two under Blandino. Now, it's not official he's going to be elevated, but that would be the most likely way they go. Uh, I don't like it, though. I, 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 And I wrote today on FanRag, I know a lot of people have problems with the NFL officiating. We've talked about this a lot, Mike, but uh, I think the problems stem from people disagreeing with the rules themselves. I think – for what Dean was asked to do, he was very, very good at. And there would have been tremendous consistency. And now it's up in the air. Yeah, I mean, does the NBA, uh, the NFL um, backtrack at all on the way they, they decide this? Or do they have to, as you mentioned, bring in somebody else to kind of head the officials? Or do they go outside the realm to bring some? That, this is a really precarious situation that, that he has put them in. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be there till May 31st, I believe, at least. Um, so uh, there's some time, uh, and they're, I, I can't imagine they're going to go outside the department. Uh, the only question is, does somebody sort of leap over uh, Riveron, who's, who's number two in command right now, which is a possibility. Uh, if they think somebody can handle... Uh, the centralized replay better than him. I think there's a possibility uh, someone else could get the gig. But, yeah, I don't like it. Uh, and I, I know, look, anytime you have uh, sort of the unit aspect, we always talk about it with officiating, whether it's football, basketball, baseball, a lot of people bring up the human element as part of the game, uh, and it is. So if your teams, uh, the only thing you can ask for is consistency. And uh, they were on that path by centralizing replay and taking it out of the hands of each individual referee. Uh, and they're still on that path. The question is, does Riveron do the job as well as Blandino or somebody else do the job as well? And we'll just have to wait and see. John, uh, do you think the NFL needs to maybe overpay for a guy to make sure that this job gets done right? You know, the way that, that they have been criticized. The officials have been criticized a lot. Blandino at the top of that list. But now it's almost like Blandino has made himself look like, hey, I was the guy who actually knew what I was doing. Now you're putting it in the hands of an unknown. Does the NFL have to maybe – he's leaving for more money. So does the NFL have to step up its efforts to find maybe a high-profile person? I don't even know if that person exists. Would my, Do they go to Fox yeah, and say, yeah. Mike Pereira, would you want the job? Hey, well, they should. That, if Mike Pereira could get out of uh, his contract, and I have no idea if he could or not. But, uh, yeah, I mean, they should have. they should have never let Pereira leave, and they should have never let Blandino leave. So – uh, they have enough money. Uh, they shouldn't be outbid for such an important position, but they have been now on two occasions. Uh, and I think they obviously didn't learn from the mistake the first time. Hopefully they learned from it this time. 
And if River Hahn does get the job and does do a good job, uh, hopefully, as I said, they learn from it and then keep them. Because this is obviously a thing now. And Pereira has sort of, he's so good on television, he's created this this industry where everybody needs a rules expert. Uh, and that's, uh, Bl- uh, Blandino's going to end up at CBS. Uh, and Mike Carey was doing it. He did not do it as well. <laughs> so obviously they needed uh, they needed an upgrade, and we'll see. I mean, just because you're good at it beyond the scenes doesn't mean you're good at it on television and you can get your thought across quickly and, and everything like that. So we'll see if he's good at it. But from the NFL standpoint, yeah, I, I don't – they, they should have learned from the mistake the first time, and obviously they didn't. John McBullen with us here on the Sports Bash on 97.3 ESPN. John, the, the fact that these guys are all leaving, though, does say something, right? Yeah, I mean, it says that they don't value the position as much as they should. And and obviously, uh, they're leaving because they have better opportunities. And when you make uh, – when an industry makes $14 billion a year, and that's where the NFL is right now, and it's only been going up and up and up, and there's no sign of that slowing down, there's no reason you can't reach into your pocket to keep these guys. But for whatever reason, and and to a certain degree, it, it, the same thing happens with the officials themselves, the on-field officials, because they have refused to make them full-time. Now they're finally, finally moving in that direction. Uh, there's no reason you should be penny-pinching when it's, you know, when you're talking about the arbiters, and sorry about that, I'm, things are falling in my house, but uh, arbiters of the game, uh, you shouldn't be penny pinching in that estimation, and that, and the NFL has been. John, you're saying the NFL doesn't value the position because there's a ton of criticism that these guys take, and it seems like each and each week there's so much criticism more and more every year. Let me ask you this question then. TV analysts, do they really need TV analysts to review those NFL rules? And does that show that the NFL rulebook maybe is too complicated and brings too much controversy to the on-field officiating? Yeah, that's you, you hit the nail on the head. I've been talking about that for years, Pete. The, the need, the fact that, that TV stations and Fox and, and CBS – think they need a rules expert for this game tells you there's a problem. There shouldn't be a necessity for someone (laughs) to come in and explain the rules to the viewing public. Now, again, Pereira has been so successful at it. Uh, Even the NBA, uh, uh, somebody hired Steve Jabby. I forgot it was ESPN or, or somebody hired him, but you don't really need him. Uh, it's just sort of the copycat mentality of television. Uh, baseball is the same way. You don't need, you understand the rules. In the NFL, uh, everything is so over-legislated. Uh, yeah, I mean, you shouldn't have a need for these guys, and that's another problem that should be addressed, but no one seems to realize it. Uh, for the most part, the Blandino role uh... – he got criticized a lot, but is that a lot of that because of the way that he came out after the fact a lot? I mean, would you deem that he was good for that position? Yeah, I think he did his job very well. I, I don't think it was coming out after the fact. I, I don't think people understand. The NFL's been doing that for years. They send a, a, a video each and every week to, to members of the media where they explain sort of controversial calls. And they've been doing that for years, dating back to before uh, Dean and sort of just to educate everyone on the rules, because again, it's over legislated. Not only is it over legislated, but it also changes so much from year to year. So all of these things are problems. Uh, but uh, again, I think when people criticize Dean and even officials, uh, they and it's understandable why they do. I agree with them, but I don't think they realize what they're criticizing. They're not criticizing the officials themselves. They're criticizing the rules. In, in other words, when you see 
an egregious pass interference call down the field, uh, a ticky-tack illegal contact. It might drive you crazy as, as a fan, right. as a viewer, but that's what the officials are being told to do. So in the league's mind, they're doing what they're asked and they're doing their job. It just seems that the timing with the criticism and the timing of the new, that this is a horrible timing for the NFL to have this happen. Oh, yeah. I, there's no question about that part of it. it it's horrible timing. Uh, I don't think they saw it coming. Uh, and it, it's just at least they have a little bit of time uh, because we've really just started off season work for a couple of teams. Uh, and obviously the real games don't start until September. And Dean's going to be there till May 31st. And hopefully they can get somebody up to speed because – it's going to be centralized replay now, and you got to have somebody who's good at it. John, uh, some news in the NFL here. Mike Silver, uh, Sports Illustrated, reporting the Raiders have reached a deal with Marshawn Lynch. Now, we know the Seahawks still hold Lynch's rights, so in order for this to happen, Seattle's going to have to release him or work out some sort of trade, but it sounds like the Raiders and Lynch have come to some sort of agreement, so uh, what's next, a release or a deal here? Uh, it's going to be a deal most likely for a late round pick. And that's not going to be a problem. As I said, John Snyder and, and Reggie McKenzie, the two general managers are really good friends. They used to work together, used to share an office. In fact, together in green Bay when they were both there. So they both get along. John Snyder who owns his rights has already said it won't be a problem uh, because the Seahawks, uh, he would count nine million against their cap unless they moved him, and they can't afford that. They currently have just over nine million in cap space, and obviously they have to sign their entire rookie class. So the last thing they want is Marshawn Lynch on their books. So this will get done, and it'll get done pretty quickly. John, is it fair to wonder how effective he'll be, though, after a year away from football? I mean, he was tremendous in 2014, but looked pretty sluggish the following year and had a bunch of injuries. Yeah, and I wrote the, about that yesterday. He did not look good, and I think people forget that. In his last year in Seattle, uh, before he went down with the sports hernia. Uh, and, again, we're talking about a guy who's past 30 now, uh, who – arguably was the most physical runner uh, during his generation. He's taken a pounding. And generally, you don't get revitalized at that position. History is clear. So I, I would be very, very concerned. And, and I do not think uh, the Oakland Raiders are going to get the Marshawn Lynch of 2014 or before. Uh, and I think a lot of Raiders fans are probably saying, sitting there and saying, and generally, it's it's all fan bases, not just uh, Oakland, but you see a big name and who used to be a star, and you assume you're getting a star, but I don't think they're getting a star. Some draft news, John. According to the Cleveland Plain Dealers, Mary Kay Cabot, Coach Hugh Jackson favors using the number one overall pick on Miles Garrett. Now, you wrote yesterday about uh, Mitch Trubisky, Garrett or Trubisky. Yeah, and in that column, which is two days before, John McMullen of 973, yes, yes, that <laughs> Hugh Jackson uh, wants Miles Garrett, and he does want Miles Garrett. I've, I've gotten that from two different sources in the NFL, but it, it comes down to a situation where he does not have uh, can full control over the personnel in Cleveland and Sashi Brown's involved, Paul D. Podest is involved. And there's somebody in that organization uh, that likes the quarterback and is considering the quarterback, and we'll see how it shakes out. There, there's no question uh, Garrett is, is a better football player at his particular position than Mitchell Trubisky, but the value of that position, we talked a, a little bit about it earlier in the week uh, is so so much bigger than any other position that if you believe Mitchell Trubisky is going to be a franchise signal caller in this league, you should take him at number one. It's as simple as that. 
according to the New York Post, a fourth-round pick is about as much as the Jets can hope for in exchange for defensive end Sheldon Richardson. Now, we know that the Eagles are trying to fortify their defensive line, and we heard about uh, Bo Allen the other day. We know the signing that they made. Should Howie make a call, would the Jets consider Kelsey or Kendrick, maybe? Should the Eagles be Mm. interested here? That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, it it would be interesting because that's a really, really talented player. But there's a lot of issues when you talk about Sheldon Richardson. There's off-the-field issues. There's money uh, involved. Obviously, the Eagles would have to create space. Now, they'd be sending sending it, some of it back with Kelsey and or Kendrick. So, uh, it's certainly, let's put it this way, they could certainly use Sheldon Richardson more than uh, Jason Kelsey at this point, for instance. So uh, while it makes some sense uh, on, on paper, uh, I'm not sure that's what the Eagles are, are looking for uh, at this particular stage. And that's one that I think is, is more pie in the sky than anything else. ESPN Patriots reporter Mike Reese believes that New England and the free agent corner Jason McCourty, that's an ideal match. Why not Philadelphia? Well, uh, that's again, actually Mark an interesting is, point there, John. Issue. That's an interesting point, John, right? McCourty would be uh, an upgrade over everybody they have. Yeah, I mean, understand money's an issue with the Eagles in general, and they would prefer to get younger. And and we're talking rookie players who are obviously uh, first-round pick you're going to have under your control for five years, uh, everybody else for four years at at a very reasonable cost uh, generally. And for this organization uh, and where they are, up against it. I think they've done most of their wrangling as far as veteran players go. Uh, and now they're going to turn their their attention uh, to the draft. And perhaps you, you can talk about, uh, again, the trades for Jason Kelsey and Michael Kendricks, who I, I believe are both on the trade market. Uh, and you can look at bringing in a, a veteran that way. But I think it, there's so much talent at the cornerback position specifically in this draft. I think that's where they want to add multiple bodies for the reason that, again, you're getting young guys who, are, who in theory, will be very, very cost-effective and very talented. So we all know that, the, or at least they say, the Eagles are tight financially under the cap. Doesn't that hurt their ability to improve at corner, John? Because McCourty, Tracy Porter, aren't those guys better than Patrick Robinson and Dwayne Gratz? Dwayne Gratz. <laughs> well, they're certainly better than Dwayne Gratz. Yeah. I mean, Come you know, on. Dwayne hasn't done, but he'll get an opportunity. He shouldn't, uh, you know, he's a former third-round pick, and this is a team that needs veteran help. I, I think their choice, though, and I've been talking about it for weeks, and their choice to bring in a veteran help was Patrick Robinson. And, you know, Patrick's played very well when he's healthy. His problem has been, obviously, uh, he hasn't been able to stay healthy. Uh, And, you know, it's hard to sit here uh, and and say before the draft that Patrick Robinson is going to play 16 games because history tells us it's probably not going to happen. But, I think it's more than just uh, being out on the field. I think the fact that they have a veteran guy like that is about mentoring the younger guys as well, and that includes Jalen Mills, uh, as well as the people they're going to bring in. So I, I think it's it's sort of a two-part equation from that job and what they're asking out of Patrick, Patrick Robinson, and they've made their decision, and it is – Patrick Robinson. It's not McCourty. It's not hmm. uh, uh, anybody else, and that's that's what they've decided. Where's Dwayne Kratz on the depth chart? <laughs> well, right now he's, he would be one of the backup corners. Right now you're looking at Patrick Robinson and, and Jalen Mills would be your projected starters, and then uh, the top backups would be C.J. Smith you and Dwayne Grant. By the way, it's funny. You go to ESPN.com and look at the depth chart for the Eagles. No joke. 
they only have left cornerback listed. They don't even have right <laughs> cornerback on there. It just says corner. Jalen Mills, Ron Brooks, uh, and that's it. There is, uh, I guess this isn't updated, but everybody, they don't even have the right cornerback <laughs> position listed. That's how. Yeah, that's it a, I mean, they have, they have some bodies. They have Aaron Grimes, who's back. Uh, they have Mitchell White, who they signed from, from the CFL. They have Grats, who they signed late last year. Uh, as I mentioned, they have Mills and Smith, who are mm-hmm. now second-year players, and they, and they brought in Patrick Robinson. So they do have some bodies. Obviously, it's not exactly Deion Sanders and Darrell Revis in their <laughs> primes. But, yeah, I mean, they have to add, and that's why we talk about it. If you look at the need positions on this team, after free agency, they've addressed wide receiver. They've addressed edge rusher. Uh, they've even addressed corner a little bit with Robinson. But after free agency, it's pretty clear that cornerback now stands out as the number one need position on this team. No doubt. Uh, draft coming up uh, less than two weeks away. We'll have plenty more on the draft starting next week on the Sports Bash 97.3 ESPN. John McMullen at JF McMullen. On Twitter, don't forget, check out his national NFL coverage at FanRank Sports NFL, their national NFL columnist, and, of course, all the Eagles news when it goes down at 97.3ESPN.com. Have a good weekend, Johnny. Hey, you too, guys. Thank you.